So the next phylum that we are going to discuss is phylum Platyhelminthes. Okay. Just for the sake of information, I am telling you one beat. There is a phylum called Tenophora. If you are studying biology in your higher classes, you are going to learn about this phylum. Between Platyhelminthes and Cylentrates comes this phylum which is called Tenophora. And the most striking feature of this phylum is they show bioluminescence. What is bioluminescence? Luminescence means light emitting property. We say the bulb is luminescent. That is it can emit light. So bioluminescence means the members under the phylum Tenophora have the property of showing bioluminescence. That is they can emit light. And very famous example of this phylum is C. comb. Okay. But we will not go into this. The next phylum that we are going to discuss is phylum Platyhelminthes. Let us break the term. So, helminthology is a study of helminths or parasites. Okay, and platy means flat. So, can you deduce the meaning? Two properties we can get from the name itself. That is, they are flat and they are, most of them are parasites. Most of them are parasites. Now, what is parasites? Parasites are those organisms. Listen carefully. Parasites are those organisms which sit upon another organism which sit upon another organism and take shelter and nutrition from that another organism. Okay, that another organism is also called host. H-O-S-T, host. That is, say I am a parasite or say this is a parasite. I am a host. So this parasite will sit inside me, take food, take shelter from me. But in return, I will get no benefit. I will be harmed. I will be harmed. So host is harmed. Okay. And parasite is benefited. Okay. Parasite is benefited because it is getting food as well as shelter. But the host is harmed. So they are the parasites. The most dangerous category of organisms are the parasites. Okay. So platyhelminthes means they are flat organisms and they are mostly parasites. The first characteristic of the members under the phylum Platyhelminthes is they are dorsoventrally flattened. They are dorsoventrally flattened. Dorsal means the front part and ventral means the back part. Okay, say my body. This is my ventral part and this is my dorsal part. You may be a bit confused but try to relate my body or your own body with that of our ancestors that is chimpanzees, the primates. They used to walk like this. So this was their frontal part that is dorsal part and this was the ventral part because it was towards the ground and it was away from the ground. Do not compare with me standing here. Okay. Suppose you are lying with your chest upside down. That is this portion is above the way our primates used to walk. So this is our dorsal part and this is our ventral part. Okay. The, the body of the platyhelminthes is dorsoventrally flattened. Means front part is also flat, back part is also flat. So overall the body is flattened. This is the first characteristic. Second characteristic is they are mostly parasites. I have already told you the definition of parasites. Those organisms which sit upon the host, takes nutrition, takes shelter, in return gives no benefit to the host but harms the host. Okay, the host is not getting any help. They are getting only benefit, the parasites and in return the host is harmed. Majority of the time the host is Sorry, majority of the time the host is harmed. Okay. The third point is they are bilaterally symmetrical.
they are bilaterally symmetrical as I have told you if this is the body of the platyhelminthes then this portion and this portion will be equal to each other say this is the plane of the symmetry means we are cutting the body like this okay I think I am very clear bilaterally symmetrical the fourth point is they are having tissue level grade of organization tissue level the fourth point that after bilaterally symmetrical was tissue level tissue level let us consider it a very common point so in characteristics the next point will be a silomet that is they do not have any silo they are having no body cavity till now we have not found it okay in platyhelminthes there is no body cavity that is they are a silomet they are triploblastic the fifth point is they are triploblastic children i think you remember triploblastic that is they are having three germ layers so they are triploblastic having three germ layers so these are the most important characteristics of the phylum of patihelminthes dorsoventrally flattened mean flat on both the sides parasites majority of them they may be ectoparasite or they may be endoparasite ectoparasite staying outside the body but taking benefit from the host and endoparasite staying inside the body and taking benefit next is bilaterally symmetrical that is if you place the plane of symmetry this half will be equal to this half they are a silomate that is there is no silom present in, the, in them they are triploblastic one very important characteristic under platyhelminthes is Since they are parasites and they need to get attached to the body of the host organism, so they have hooks and suckers. What are suckers? Suckers are open structure by virtue of which they can attach. Say this is the body of the host and this is the uh, platyhelminth, the mouth. The mouth has suckers like magnets and it can stuck to the body of the host and take up the nutrition, food, whatever required. So they have, majority of them have suckers. Okay. And the, la and the examples for platyhelminths are the examples are planaria liver fluke. Planaria is free living. Planaria is not a parasite. Planaria is free living, free living, whereas liver fluke is totally parasite. Planaria is rarely parasitic in nature, majorly it stays alone, it prefers to stay alone. So, this is liver fluke and this is a parasite. Now, as we discuss every time, we shall go for the one representative member for this. Another very important example for this platyhelminthes is tenia solium is tenia solium that is that uh, organism which is called tapeworm this is a very important example for the member of platyhelminthes that is tenia solium tapeworm it usually comes from that of the pig and this is very very dangerous parasite so as for other phylums we have seen this is one of the member of the phylum platyhelminthes tinea solium this is tinea solium for human beings this is found in our livers okay this greatly affects us it's a very dangerous parasite and it comes from pig when we eat the meat of meat sorry when we eat the meat of pig from there tinea solium comes to our body because pig is one of the another host for this organism so mainly we will focus on the structure see as you can see there is a sucker in on the mouth this sucker helps the tinea solium to get attached to the intestine of our body it mainly stays in the intestine so after intestine it affects the liver and other organs mainly the reverse liver but for staying it stays in our intestine and this sucker helps intestine to get stuck with the body of the tinea solium there are hooks also which assist in stucking this is the head portion this is the entire body and finally we have the tail as you can see 
first it is narrow then it is getting broader and slowly again it is getting narrow the body is dorsoventrally flattened okay this is a very long size parasite but it can stay in a coiled form inside our intestine so tinea solium is a very very important representative member under the phylum platyhelminthes so after the phylum platyhelminthes the next we are going to learn about nematodes also called astral helminthes they are also parasites so they are also having some characteristics of parasites that you have learnt in platyhelminthes presence of hooks and suckers and all but the major difference between astral helminthes to that of platyhelminthes is they have a cylindrical body what they have they have a cylindrical body but in case of platyhelminthes they were having dorsoventrally flattened body but they are having cylindrical body The second characteristics of the phylum astral helminthes is for the first time in kingdom animalia there was a complete elementary canal starting from mouth till anus there was a complete and straight elementary canal for the first time encountered in the kingdom animalia the next property which is very striking for that of astral helminthes is they are pseudocoelomates that is they are having real tissues but no real organs they are having a false coelom pseudocoelom as we have already discussed prior to our discussion that is they are pseudocoelomates or they are having false coelom that is apparently you may feel that there is presence of organs and uh, tissues but in reality they do not have any real organs they are pseudocoelomates or they are having false coelom the next point under them is they are also triploblastic they are triploblastic i don't think i have to again explain that and they are bilaterally symmetrical that also we have discussed ample of times so majorly what we can conclude is these are the main characteristics of the phylum nematodes or astral helminthes cylindrical body complete and straight elementary canal for the first time we found pseudocoelom then we have triploblastic and lastly we have bilaterally symmetrical body they are also parasites they are also parasites and one more character characteristic you can add with that of this that they are sexually dimorphic sexually dimorphic try to understand this word please try to understand this word dimorphic okay di means two morpho morphology morphology is study of external features means the male and female can be distinguished from one another by looking externally means if you see two astral helminth you can say yeah this one is male and yeah this one is female by the difference in their morphology that is their external features so this is all about the phylum astral helminthes for your examples you can remember two names Ascaris lumbricoides and Ucheria bancrofti. Ascaris lumbricoides causes intestinal diseases and also eye filaria, whereas Ucheria bancrofti causes elephantiasis or filariasis. You know this. Ucheria bancrofti causes elephantiasis. The limbs get inflamed. So the last property that I have forgotten to mention over here is since. they are having cylindrical bodies so they are also called round worms they are also called round worm that is they are round so round worm so this is all about phylum nematodes again i am repeating for you people cylindrical body straight and complete elementary canal pseudocoelomates triploblastic 
bilaterally symmetrical, sexually dimorphic, example Ascaris lumbricoids, Ucheria bancrofti and they are commonly called roundworms. Okay. Okay. So next we are coming to the phylum Annelida. Very very important phylum. Why it is very very important? Because again for the first time there was an interesting phenomenon observed in them that is they are silomates. They are silomates. They are having true body cavity and they are called silomates. The second point is they are having metameric segmentation. Very important. Metameric segmentation means what? See if this is the body of an annelid. Segments are present and all the segments are at equal distances from each other. I think you are getting my point. They are at equal distances. These distances are equal. So they are having metameric segmentation. Okay. So they are having metameric segmentation. The body is segmented. And that is why they are also called segmented worm. They are also called segmented worms. Showing metameric segmentation. Okay. The third point is they are also triploblastic. They are also bilaterally symmetrical and there is definite organ differentiation. In exams, many a times the question comes, what are the advanced characteristics of annelids over nematodes? This will be the first point for that. Annelids are having organ differentiation, they are having real organs whereas nematodes as we have studied just now they are only having tissues but no real organs, they are pseudo silomates whereas they are truly silomates. Okay? So this is a very very important point that you have to keep in your mind. See if this is an annelid, from head till tail the entire body is segmented and the segments are metameric that is they are present at equal distances from this segment is present say 2 cm so this will be also at 2 cm this will be 2 cm so every segment will be 2 cm apart from each other that is they are metamerically segmented equally segmented the most important example under annelids is ferretima posthuma Ferretima posthuma is the earthworm that you see around you every time. Ferretima. Then you have Hirudinaria. Hirudinaria that is leech. If I just discuss some of the internal structures of this phylum Annelida, then there are two important characteristics that you have to always remember. They are having parapodia. The members of the phylum Annelida are having parapodia that is required for movement. That is required for movement. And also they are having nephridia. Nephridia is meant for excretion. They are having organ differentiation. So they are having nephridia for excretion and parapodia for movement. And each parapodia is linked with certain segments. Okay, Each parapodia is linked with certain segments. Say every segment is giving rise to one pair of parapodia. If there are 23 segments, then 23 pairs of parapodia means total 46 parapodia. Okay, So podia means legs and para movement. So movement by the parapodia. One characteristic, if you say it is found in case of ferretima posthuma, ferretima posthuma that is earthworm, that is tiflosol. That is tiflosol and clitellum. Okay, tiflosol is nothing but the intestinal region of the earthworm. 
intestinal region of the earthworm present between 23 to 26th segment present between 23 to 26th segment okay and clitellium is also nothing but the frontal part of the earthworm okay you need not to remember if you don't want tiflosol and clitellium but this point you can mention in characteristics presence of parapodia and presence of nephridia an example i've already mentioned ferritima and hirudinaria so just revising the major characteristics first they are having metameric segmentation they are silomates they are bilaterally symmetrical they are triploblastic they are having parapodia for movement they are having nephridia for excretion they are having clitellum and tiflosol as a part of digestive system and they are found everywhere from land till water present example is ferritima and example is leech and they are also bilaterally symmetrical and triploblastic okay so we complete phylum annelids next we have the phylum arthropod 